In this video, we will solve another mesh current problem with a current source. Only this time, the current source will be placed on the common branch between meshes. So let's try out this example. So in this problem, we're asked to find each of the mesh currents. And in fact, this circuit is no different from the last video, except I just swapped around the positions of this current source with this resistor. And the point is, when I place the resistor on the common branch, between two meshes, the, the equations that you'd write and solve would be a bit different. So let's just go ahead and solve that. First step to take is to assign each of the mesh currents. So we have this mesh current here, we'll call IA. And this mesh current here, we'll call IB. Now here's when the problem starts to really differ. In the last two videos, we know that we had to take a KVL of each of the mesh. Except there will be a problem if you do this here. And let me demonstrate it uh, right away. So we start from a point and we'll write the KVL of mesh A. We'll try to, but we'll see that it doesn't seem to make sense. So again, as you go through this voltage source, going from the negative to the positive terminal, there's a voltage gain. We assign that as positive 10. So positive 10. Then going through this resistor, the resistor's voltage change will be delta V equals to I, R, I times R. So resistors are a voltage drop, that will be negative, negative IA multiplied by its resistance, 5 ohms. And after that, you'd encounter this current source. Now remember, we are writing KVL equations here. And KVL, you had to sum up the voltage changes across each device. The problem is, we don't know how to describe voltage changes uh, across current sources. You cannot use uh, delta V equals to IR. You do, they didn't even tell you what the R of the current source is. So the way to go around this to avoid current sources, so to speak, would be to use super meshes. Now here's how you define, how you identify the super mesh. The super mesh would surround the current source. It would surround and contain the current source uh, where the two meshes seem to merge. Okay, this is, okay, that was a poor choice of words. But notice that in this example, this current source is between this mesh here and this mesh here. And remember that I couldn't continue writing the KVL equation as I passed through this current source. So the way I would have to identify my super mesh would be to literally go around the current source. So here's what I mean. The super mesh that I would consider would be this outer rectangle. It literally surrounds the current source and I will have to write a KVL equation for this super mesh uh, that contains and kind of avoids the current source. So here's what I mean. Our job is to again select the starting point and write a KVL equation for this super mesh but we will not go through this branch but instead we will go we will follow this rectangle that we, we've identified. So super meshes will tend to avoid the current sources that we encounter. It's simply by taking by merging okay, the two meshes together will be here, right? And you'd have the common branch here. What we do is we simply avoid the common branch. We take the whole exterior of the two meshes combined. So let's just go ahead and do that. I'm going to keep the super mesh highlighted uh, so we can keep track of where we're supposed to go. Again, we select our starting point. I've, we can just use the same starting point. So instead of saying KVL of the super mesh, what I should really say is... Oh, sorry. Instead of saying KVL of the mesh, I should write the KVL of the super mesh. We will start from our red dot here, again, passing through the voltage source. There's a 10 volt gain, so it's positive 10, no change in that. 
and when we go through the resistor, the 5 ohm resistor up here, again it's a voltage drop, so minus IA multiplied by 5. Now, again, we don't go through the current source branch because we don't know how to describe the voltage change associated with a current source. Instead, we follow the super meshes path. And when we do that, we have to describe the voltage change across this 2 ohm resistor. Now, what's the current through this uh, 2 ohm resistor? It will be IB, correct? Because IB goes through this mesh. So what we do is, again, it's a voltage drop, so minus IB multiplied by 2 ohms. And as we go through here, again, it will be minus I B multiplied by 4 ohms. We go over here, and there's no devices. Again, following the super mesh, you go through here, no devices, and we reach our starting point. So, we finally ended the KVL equation. We can just equate this to 0. We're going to do some simplification. and we should get our first KVL equation. Now the second thing to write is to, again, use the idea that current sources determine the current of the branch that they are placed on. Now let's take a look at the current source that we have in our circuit here. In our circuit, notice that this branch that the current source is on, this branch, happens to have a 2 ampere current directed downwards as indicated by the arrow here so what it's trying to tell us is that the net current in the branch is 2 ampere downwards so how will we write this in the equation simply we have to make use of ia and ib and relate it to this 2 ampere downwards here again remember i said the net current downwards is 2 amperes and what is the net current if I were to express that using IA and IB? IA, now follow this clockwise direction. As IA turns clockwise in its mesh, it passes through this branch in the downward direction. Okay, this will be IA. And if you follow IB in its clockwise direction, it will be going upwards through the common branch. So, that means the net current will be their difference. And specifically, I'll take IA minus IB. Because IA moves downwards, IB moves upwards, so it opposes it. That's why we minus away IB to get the 2 ampere downwards. So this is our second equation. And in fact, we're done. We have our two equations and two unknowns. One equation here, the second equation here. Now we'll just box it up in our matrix format. Again, to get this matrix, you take the coefficients here. And you take the coefficients here. Here is positive 1, here is negative 1. This will be the matrix of your unknowns, namely IA and IB. And here will be your constant terms, which are negative 10 and 2. Negative 10 and 2 from here. And what I mean by punching into the calculator, I don't think I made this uh, specifically clear in the last few videos. When I say to punch these into the calculator, I meant to solve for this matrix, correct? So what we do is, we isolate IA and IB on the left hand side. You move the coefficient matrix to the right hand side, you should invert it. So, because it's a multiplication, so that means if you move it to the right hand side, you'd have to invert it. And so, I'm pretty sure calculators can indeed do inversion of matrix, matrices. So, you should finally arrive at your answers. And I think the answer should be IA being 2 amperes. And IB being 0 amperes. Now don't worry if it's 0 amperes, it just simply means there's no current passing through this mesh, but really it's possible.
In the next video, we will learn how to reduce a complicated circuit into its Devlin and Norton equivalent. See you there.